Hello and welcome to the discussion sessions of the production technology theory and practice uh, series of uh, lectures. Now, let me remind you that we have started discussing in our last <coughs> session the NC and the CNC uh, machines, computer numerically controlled machines. Okay. Now, there what we said is that uh, because of the greater flexibility basically the uh, numerically controlled machines came into picture. And the greatest advantage of the uh, NC CNC machines is that it can be it can have more flexibility in comparison to the conventional machining. Uh, because we have the uh, prime mover in uh, various uh, access uh, you know the um, individually and therefore, the all the axis can be moved as per our choice and various um, relative movement between the tool and the workpiece can be given. Okay, now, the uh, what we discussed last time is the program input device and the program input device we said is the means for part program to be entered into the CNC control. Okay. Now, uh, machine control unit, this is another unit which we said as the uh, brain of the machine okay, or this is the heart of the N CNC system. This is used to perform the following functions to read the coded instructions, all right, to decode the coded instructions, to implement interpolations. Implement interpolation means whether the tool has to move linearly or the tool has to make a uh, circular movement. Okay, this has to be made, their decision has to be made by this according to the program. It can also have a helical movement okay, to generate axis motion commands, okay, to feed the axis motion commands to the amplifier circuits for driving the axis mechanisms, to receive the feedback signals of position and speed for each drive axis. So, here it uh, what happens is it is not only that the, that the simply program is given or the signal is given, but there is a feedback that is taken. Okay. We will use, we will have, we will discuss that what are these kind of feedbacks, how, what kind of feedbacks are used here. Now, the feedback means that once the signal is going, for example, the signal has gone that the tool has to move linearly by 5 millimeter, let us say. So, whether the tool has really moved 5 millimeters or it has moved only by 4.98 millimeter or 5.01 millimeter that has to be monitored. And this feedback will be sent to the uh, machine control unit, so that it can actually have a uh, tracking, proper tracking of the movement. And if the tool has not moved according to the uh, desired program, then the machine control unit will make the correction. Okay. It will uh, uh, give some additional signal to the to the mover to the prime mover so that the tool can be uh, tool movement can be corrected. This is the receiving of the feedback signals of positioning okay, and speed. Next is to implement auxiliary control functions such as coolant or uh, spindle on off okay, and the tool change. So, all these functions are uh, coded in the program and the machine control unit has to understand what is the code by the uh, program given and accordingly execute the program. Now, another one of course, is the hardware that is the machine tool. CNC controls are used to control various types of machine tools. Regardless of which type of machine tool is control, it always has a slide table and a spindle to control the position and the speed. The machine table is controlled in the x and y axis while the spindle runs along the z axis. This is the uh, normal uh, standard uh, for uh, the normal standard procedure. Okay. Feedback system, the feedback system is also referred to as the uh, measuring system. Okay. Sometimes the feedback system is called that is a measuring system. It uses position and speed transducers to continuously monitor the position at which the 
cutting tool is located at any particular instant. So, just now I talked to talk to you about the feedback system that uh, we have to see whether the tool has been positioned according to the program which is given according to our requirement all right. Now, if it is not then the correction has to be made. So, for that we need to have the different kind of transducers position ok. Now, the transducer one transducer could be that it will it will send it will uh, sense the signal of the tool movement as per length ok and it will uh, calculate that how much the tool has moved ok. Then that signal will be given to the machine control unit and the machine control unit will take the decision subsequently all right. The MCU which is the machine control unit uses the difference between the reference signals and feedback signals to generate the control signals for correcting position and the speed errors. So, I will show you later in a block diagram that how this function is actually carried out ok. Drive system, drives are used to provide the controlled motion to the CNC elements ok. This to move the to, to uh, like our prime mover as I said about the prime mover. So, this is moving the spindle ok or move, moving the lead screw for the feed movement and so on. Now, a drive system consists of amplifier circuits, drive motors and ball lead screws as I said. The machine control unit feeds the control signals that is positioning control and the speed control of each axis to the amplifier circuit separately. It will be along the x axis or along the z axis these movements in case of turning these movements will be recorded and this movement will be sensed by the um, by the transducer and it will be sent to the machine control unit ok. The control signals are augmented to uh, actuate drive motors which in turn rotate the ball lead screws to position the machine table. This is how it is executed the uh, it will come to the machine control unit machine control unit will um, compare it with the reference signal and it will say it will generate the error signal. Error signal is nothing but the signal that is required to correct the uh, position if it is not proper or correct the speed if it is not proper and so on. These are the drives of the NC machines they could be the, the these drives could be either the hydraulic drives or the DC motors or the stepper motors. Now, hydraulic drives these are used in relatively high power uh, NC systems where the higher power is required all right. Now, the hydraulic system as you understand that they have the higher torque carrying capacity ok and uh, the very big advantage of the hydraulic drives is that the hydraulic drives are uh, compact and with the small design small with the, that compactness in comparison to an electric motor their power is much more ok. For smaller size uh, valves for example, hydraulic valves they have a lot of uh, power uh, or the hydraulic drives or the actuators their sizes are not very uh, big like not li as, as much as the electrical motors, but their power is uh, they are more powerful ok. So, overall their torque carrying capacity is higher ok. Now, if you see here the hydraulic drives, uh, drives uh, this is the details of the hydraulic drive that it is the actuating signal is given to the servo valve um, amplifier. So, here the through the servo valve amplifier the actuating signal is amplified and it is given to the servo valve. Servo valve is nothing but uh, opening or closing a port ok through which the signal goes all right and that actually that is that is sent to the hydraulic motor. So, hydraulic motor from to the hydraulic motor the hydraulic power supply is connected ok and hydraulic power supply gets the hydraulic fluid from the sump from here all right. Now, the hydraulic motor in its turn depending on the signal it is coming from the actuating signal it, it uh, gets the required amount of fluid to the hydraulic motor and therefore, the pressure. So, it will actually 
create the torque and it will rotate the lead screw. On the lead screw, we will have the table with the tool post or whatever is required there depending on the machine and the table with the tool will be moving along the lead screw to the left or to the right depending on the signal that has been given through the hydraulic motor and it is in its turn the hydraulic motor will get the signal from the actuating signal and the servo valve ok. So, after hydraulic motor completes the operation ok the at the exit we have the used oil. So, that used oil is filtered this is uh, cleaned and comes to the sump from the sump with the help of the pump it is pumped to the hydraulic power supply once again and the whole thing is uh, repeated. All right. Now, hydraulic power supply this has uh, a complete uh, diagram is shown here. Hydraulic power supply has a three phase electric motor okay, and the pump. So, the pump uh, through the filters the used oil comes through the filter to the pump. Okay. So, used oil come from here from the sump. So, here we have the filter and through the filter it goes to the pump from the pump it goes to the motor. Okay. So, from the pump it has the filters also and uh, through the filters the fluid which will actually come from this used oil. Okay. So, this fluid will or oil this will be going through the check and the pressure valves okay. and then it will go to different axis of the motor x, y or z all right. In between the uh, valves and the um, outlet we have the accumulator all right. Now, check valve for example, here for, res uh, for restricting the flow from accumulator back into the pump. So, it may so happen that the accumulator has is pressure is high and the the fluid can actually go back to the pump and the motor because of this. So, this check valve will stop that movement stop that flow okay, and it restricts the flow from the accumulator back to the pump it will not allow okay. pressure valve whereas, for controlling the supply pressure to the servo system. So, this will actually control that whatever supply pressure is required this much will be provided. If it is less for example, in that case the accumulator will be activated it stores hydraulic energy and for smoothening the pulsating flow. So, if it is uh, if suppose it fails okay, or pressure becomes low then it will activate the accumulator and from the accumulator it will actually go to the axis all right, and so on. So, this in fact checks the um, or controls the supply pressure to the uh, servo system this is the servo system different axis. So, the entire system is uh, it is in here okay. and uh, from here it goes to the uh, I mean this arrow is to the axis of the motor. So, this is the hydraulic motor. So, in this motor there could be three motors on the three axis or if it is a five axis machine and so on here one axis is shown which goes to the hydraulic motor and the hydraulic motor rotates the lead screw along with the table. Okay. So, this is the system of the uh, hydraulic motor. Uh, now, in the case of hydraulic motor as I said that is the greatest advantage that it has a very high torque carrying capacity and their uh, sizes are very small they are very compact. Okay. Now, of course, it uh, hydraulic uh, drives have the disadvantage also one, one very big disadvantage is that uh, the oil has to be absolutely cleaned. Okay. If any dirt comes see what happens is uh, this servo valves they are very complicated and their ports are very small. So, in case a dirt comes in and accumulates in the port the servo valve will not work all right. and that movement may be in micron the movement of the uh, valve can be in micron to open uh, open or close the port. Okay. So, if a dirt comes in and uh, gets accumulated in those ports the entire valve can get clogged that is one thing. Second thing is that uh, when the whole system works the uh, temperature evolves okay, temperature rises and at that temperature the viscosity of the fluid that is oil 
it can be actually changed that is another disadvantage. So, therefore, viscosity may not be constant depending on the temperature if, if the temperature varies. And the next disadvantage is that uh, um, the hydraulic system will always have some sort of leakage. Okay. So, see for example, when it goes to the goes through the servo valve all right, or it goes through the actuator okay, hydraulic uh, cylinders, uh, there always will have some sort of leakage. Okay. It is a small amount, but it can be a small leakage and that has to be taken into consideration. So, in many designs the design has to take care so that the leakage is eliminated or the leakage is minimum and there are many designs uh, in the hydraulic cylinders so that the um, uh, you know the leakage is minimum. Okay. These are the uh, DC drives, so di direct current mostly used drive for the NC machines, DC motors are very popular since its voltage and speed can be varied smoothly and easily regulated. So, for control it is very convenient okay, because you see here it is its voltage and speed that can be smoothly varied okay, and can be regulated very easily. Principle of operation is based on the uh, rotation of an uh, armature winding and this is the armature wi winding here, here it is shown and this one. Okay within a magnetic field. So, this armature will be rotated depending on the winding okay, and depending on the magnetic field that we have. So, this is the uh, armature okay, and uh, uh, here also we have the winding. So, this, this is of course, not a uh, clear not a um, detailed picture, but you must have uh, seen the detailed picture of the motors. So, this is the armature and the armature winding and which is rotating within the magnetic field. This can be used as a generator or as a motor all right. So, it can actually the shaft can be rotated and it will produce electricity or if you pass the electricity the shaft will be rotated. When the shaft is uh, rotated this is actually works as a motor or if the shaft is rotated by an external source of energy and then this uh, power can be created. So, this is then this works as a generator. Okay. Here you can see that that A is given as a uh, this is the rotor, okay. B is the starter winding this one and the C is the commutator. Okay. Commutator is to take the current because shaft is rotating. So, you know this there is a commutator which is required here. Okay. The uh, third type of uh, motors that is uh, prime mover these are the stepper motors. Now, the stepper motors they are actually of course, not very high torque carrying capacity like DC motors or uh, hydraulic uh, drives. So, therefore, the stepper motors are used when the machines are uh, of uh, smaller size basically they are not very high torque carrying capacity. Okay. So, stepper motors the diagram schematic diagram shown here this is an incremental digital control device. Okay. And the stepper motors translate an input pulse sequence into a proportional angular movement. Okay. So, input is given to the coil to the driver to the drive from the outer external source which is which is uh, some kind of a uh, you know pulse okay. and that pulse will be given in a sequence and then as a result or the output will be the rotation of the rotor okay, uh, angular increment. So, one angular increment step for each input pulse that is the um, kind of the rotation it may have or it may have uh, other uh, you know the scale. For example, for each input it may also have the half rotating or in each input pulse there can be two rotating. So, that depends on what kind of uh, stepper motor it is and what kind of you know, winding we have in the rotor in the starter and so on. Okay. The shaft position is determined by the number of pulses, the number of pulses given here at the input. So, the shaft position is determined by the number of pulses and its velocity that what is the speed of this uh, shaft that depends on the frequency pulse frequency 
at which frequency the pulses are given. Okay. So, uh, one thing is the number of pulses, how many pulses we are giving or another thing is that by which frequency the pulses are given. So, uh, number determines the position that how much it will be moving and then it will take a position and then how fast it will be moving the velocity that is determined by the pulse frequency. Okay. The shaft speed in steps per second is equal to the incoming frequency in the pulse per second. This is what it is said that the velocity is determined by the pulse frequency. Okay. This is the pulse frequency and this is the velocity that is the speed, shaft speed. An electronic switch is used as a driving unit. So, this electronic switch actually this is this can be automated to make the changeover from one coil to another coil so that so that the rotor can be rotated either in this way or in this way that is clockwise or the anti clockwise direction. Okay. So, this is the switch that switching system will take the uh, or determine the rotation of the rotor in one word. Okay. So, here is the starter there is a way of winding and the rotor will rotate depending on the input pulses which are given okay. and uh, this is explained here that uh, this rotor is the shaft. Okay. This is the shaft which you are actually rotating or you are positioning. So, positioning will depend by the number of pulses you are providing to the, to the input uh, uh, system to the input uh, circuit and what is the frequency of the pulse that is provided that determines the uh, speed of the uh, of the shaft or speed of the rotor. Okay. All right. Now, let us talk about uh, the interpolation, let us see what is that interpolation. Okay. Now, interpolation is to calculate the intermediate points of a curve given its starting and the end coordinates. So, I told you earlier also that uh, when the tool has to move let us say from one point to another point in a linear movement. Okay. So, there we have to we have to calculate the coordinates from which point to which point it is moving and then accordingly we give uh, the movement or the program or the signal to the tool that is called the interpolation okay. or the tool can go from one point to another point in a circular way. Okay. So, depending on the uh, on the radius or the diameter of the curve and the coordinates we will accordingly give the signal to the tool and the tool will be moving exactly according to that path that will be the um, uh, circular interpolation. Okay. So, to calculate the intermediate points of a curve given its starting and the end coordinates two coordinates are given starting and end and intermediate coordinates it has, uh, has to be calculated. So, depending on the intermediate coordinates you understand that the tool can move linearly or circular in a circular way. Required for machining straight surfaces that are not parallel to either of the coordinate axis. Okay. If it is parallel to the x axis, x axis here in the turning or y axis here in the turning. So, in that case there is no problem because you are um, you are asking the tool to move according to the x you write in the program that x and y it will move all right but if we want to move it not parallel to any of these axes in that case we have to say that what should be the interpolation either it will be then linear interpolation or it will be the circular interpolation okay now the types of interpolation as i was telling it can be linear it can be circular it can be parabolic okay so linear circular and parabolic these are the three types of interpolation which are popularly used in the programming or in the in the CNC uh, machines. Depending upon whether the given profile is approximated with the help of straight lines, arcs of circle or segments of a parabola. Segment of a parabola is the parabolic uh, interpolation, okay, segment of arcs of circles. So, this is the circular interpolation and so on. So, let us see how it can be done. Linear interpolation. So, we have the x and y coordinate let us say it is we are writing it this way x and y coordinate. Okay. Now, coordinates of successive intermediate points that is if x 1 y 1 is the starting point and x 2 y 2 is the end point in that case these successive intermediate points can be calculated from the consideration that distances x 2 minus x 1 
and the y2 minus y1 must be traveled in equal time okay because it is a straight line all right so therefore the intermediate points will be xs successive intermediate points this is x1 plus let's say sum of s1 to n okay number x2 minus x1 divided by n number all right and the ys is similarly y1 plus y2 minus y1 divided by n this is from 1 to n all all points summing up from 1 to n n is the num total number of steps between the a to b so depending on the step that you are taking one here suppose two here and so on n value will be accordingly varied okay and you can find out that that which what is the coordinate for next to next to next and so on and then the uh, join these coordinates this joining will be done uh, by the machine this this coordinate will be calculated co intermediate coordinates will be calculated by the machine control unit mcu that's why we said that this is the brain or heart of the machine okay we are only giving in the program that what is the we are only saying in the program we will see it later that we need the interpolation or the linear interpolation and we are giving the coordinate of x and coordinate of uh, x1 and y1 and the coordinate of x2 y2 these are the coordinates which are actually the two points in beginning and the ending and the tool will decide that how to go okay now why to calculate the intermediate points because it will be the uh, shortest path that the uh, interpolation will calculate okay according to of course our code, our drawing and the s is the sequence number of the particular step that is s equal to 1 2 3 and so on that you understand this now um, xs here in this case if it is given as the a x1 y1 and x2 y2 coordinate is given x2 y2 here as a b okay and this is the uh, center of this circle this is the path or the sector of a uh, circle so in that case the xs is x of mu let's say some some point and this will be x1 minus y into s minus 1 minus ym divided by n from 1 1 to mu let's say there are mu numbers okay so here the n is also the total number of uh, uh, steps between a and b okay like in here s is the sequence number same thing mu is the instantaneous value of the step wise change in the s what is the value next value and so on so in that case with the o as center the tool will be moving from a to b okay with this interpolation so we have to in the program again we are telling uh, in the program that we need the circular interpolation there is a code for circular interpolation or there is a code for the uh, linear interpolation now where it is used let me also tell you like uh, circular uh, the the uh, linear interpolation for example this is the turning lathe okay turning cnc cnc turning machine okay in that case the tool point has to move from one point to another point or the drill has to move from one point to another point okay so there it is if it is not parallel to x or y axis then we have to say that is a linear interpolation because we are linearly moving okay in case we have to make a contour then we have to tell that there is a movement that is required in the semicircular movement and uh, for example in case of uh, case of uh, milling cutter okay in case of milling cutter we need to give a uh, profile we need to cut a profile and for that profile we need to have the movement of the milling cutter end milling cutter for example in a uh, circular interpolation okay so we have to give the coordinates and so on so this is the formula that will be used by the machine control unit to calculate the coordinates of the intermediate points okay this is the um, theory behind this and it will finally move the tool from uh, one point to the other another point which we have designated which we have actually set there now if we uh, see the types of uh, the computer numerically controlled that means what types of numerically controlled uh, controls exist now there are uh, different types 
based on the motion type we have the point to point control, straight cut control or the continuous path control. Okay. Based on the control loops we have the open loop or the closed loop systems. I will explain each of them in details. Now based on the power supply we have either electric or the hydro, um, hydraulic okay, or the pneumatic. Based on the positioning system we have the incremental or the absolute. So, these things we will discuss now one by one. Now based on the motion type we said that there is point to point, straight cut and the continuous path. Okay, these are the examples. Now point to point that is uh, no contouring capability. Here is the example that means uh, suppose we have a drill okay, uh, or we have a, let us say spot welding machine or the spot welding head. So, the spot welding has to be moved from one place to another place. Okay. So, let us say the manipulator or the robot hand is holding that and it is moving from one place to another place or the drilling machine um, is moving the drill spindle with the drill after it drilled a hole it has to come up come out and then it will move to another position. Okay. So, this is point to point and here what happens the um, in this the how the tool will be moving that is not important, but only the coordinates will be given from the um, from one point to another point. Okay. Now, here uh, in the uh, point to point no contouring capability in the sense that it can actually move only in the linear way alright, it cannot move in the uh, circular way not as per the contour alright. Now the straight cut control one axis motion at a time is controlled for machining. Now the straight cut control is shown here that means in this example what is said is that the end milling cutter this is moving along one parallel to one of the axis either parallel to this axis or parallel to this axis. It is actually also can be um, said you know in the case of the turning let us say we have to turn this work piece alright. And, uh, and now the tool, tool is here and this tool can move either in this direction okay, when it is facing is required or in this direction when the turning process is required. So, it will move like this then it can move from here to here, then it can move from here to here and so on. So, that means it is moving either you know parallel to this axis or parallel to this axis. So, in this turning case we said that this is x and this is uh, the z alright. So, either it is along the z or along the y uh, sorry along the x. So, x also can be moved to face this and so on. So, this is uh, shown here that the tool either it is a turning tool or it is a milling cutter. Okay. The tool can move at a time parallel to one of the axis either x axis or z axis it is in case of turning, but in case of milling it is x and y. Okay. So, the third one is the contouring, contouring is the multiple axis controlled simultaneously that means in that case let us say we have a milling cut a end milling cutter and the end milling cutter is required to make a contour uh, groove okay, here. So, this contour groove to make that the tool has to move in a very complicated path like this. So, that means we have to then control both the axis together. So, this is contouring which is not possible with the help of the uh, straight cut control okay, or with the help of the point to point control. But if you see that uh, capability of the um, contouring uh, control, then you will realize that the controlling can control, contouring control, okay, this can be used for uh, of course, uh, straight cut control or the um, point to point control, is not it that you understand. Or for example, this one straight cut control, this cannot be used for contouring control, but this can be used for point to point control because this capability it has. But point to point control is the easiest and this is the simplest, this is the cheapest. This is uh, used only for the point to point and cannot be used for uh, straight path control or straight cut control or the uh, contouring. All right. But greater versions like contouring can be used for both of them, this can be used for the point to point and so on. 
Okay. Types of CNC based on the control loop as I uh, told you mentioned it somewhere that there could be the uh, feedback control systems okay. or it can be an open loop control system. Let us say in that case the pulse train that is the input signal is giving to is given to the stepping motor okay. and the stepping motor which we already discussed that uh, for each pulse the uh, motor can be rotated uh, at a certain angular uh, you know angle. Okay. So, let us say this is the movement of the stepper motor output shaft, shaft depending on the uh, input pulses given okay. and with the gear train this will be then moving the uh, lead screw and on the lead screw we have the work table along with the work piece. So, the work piece will be moving either to the right side or to the left side on the lead screw. All right. Now, the pulse train let us say we are giving the signal here in the input for uh, stepping motor to move to a certain degree okay, rotation, but whether that has been accomplished or not that we are not measuring at the output. So, output is open okay, that is why it is called the uh, open loop control system. Of course, those open loop control systems are cheaper, it is easier and we can use them when we are absolutely sure that whatever the input uh, comment we are giving or input signal we are giving to the to the mover okay the output signal will be accordingly so it will be precise movement or it will be precise motor so then we do not need to check the output need to control the output okay but when we have to control very precisely that whether the input signal is uh, actually being followed at the output then we need to have the feedback control okay and the feedback control is like that that uh, here is the input signal this is a comparator okay this is the dac that is the uh, this is converter this is the dc servo motor okay uh, this is the converting digital to analog because this is the servo motor okay and this servo motor will uh, rotate the uh, rotate the gear train and in its turn it will rotate the lead screw, lead screw with the work table all right. After that how much it is moving that is being sensed by a position sensor which is absent here as you can see this. So, that position center depending on the signal which is given to the input okay, the lead screw will be moving along with the work table this will be sensed and this sensor signal will be sent to the signals to the input. Okay the input and this signal will be compared in this comparator okay, and the error signal is produced. Error signal is something uh, which is the discrepancy between the input and the uh, output signal if any. So, suppose the according to the input signal the work table has to move let us say uh, 20 millimeter and it has moved to 19.5 millimeter let us so, there is a discrepancy of 0.5 millimeter. Okay. So, this discrepancy signal that is in terms of the error signal that is in control technology it is called the uh, error signal. This error signal is the discrepancy between the input and the output signal. It is generated so that the in the performance of the um, uh, device is improved so that it can be corrected. Okay. So, the error signal is again uh, converted digital to analog and this is uh, given along with the input to the DC servo motor to tell that you know uh, the output is not uh, as per the desired level and it has to be improved it has to be corrected. So, the DC motor accordingly give the correction moves more or moves less so that the positioning can be done um, accordingly according to the input signal. So, you can see that this is a closed loop control system that means the feedback is continuously monitored and accordingly the compensation is given to the input so that the output signal can be corrected if it is not according to the input signal. Okay. So, both these systems can be um, utilized we will discuss a little more about the uh, uh, feedback system in terms of the adaptive feedback system, adaptive feedback control how they work because most of the uh, most of the modern machines particularly the NC and the CNC machines they are 
um, fitted with the adaptive control systems and they are very useful because they improve the um, performance of the machine all right once more uh, these are more complicated because you know that uh, they, we have to have a positional uh, position uh, sensor and it is the uh, not only the directly it can be given to the input but it has to be then it has to go through the uh, pre amplifier and the amplifier to amplify the signal because uh, the sensor se signal from the sensor can be very weak so it can it has to be ma you know amplified so there could be a there has to be a pre amplifier to pre amplify that and then amplify the signal okay coming from the pre amplifier then this signal can be put in the input or given in the input okay so sometimes the phase also can be changed so if the phase has to be changed then there has to be a phase changer and then the uh, uh, output from the phase changer has to be supplied to the input then the input and this signal will be compared and so on so therefore these systems are more expensive complicated okay uh, but they are more accurate because the output signal is always uh, measured monitored and corrected okay the output signal we can see we can say that it is always as per the input signal as per the desired level that's why these are uh, more accurate and more uh, reliable okay open loop these are these are the things which are written here i have already told that that open loop limitations are that control unit assumes the desired position in the chip okay so there is no uh, compensation and typically a lower torque motor like uh, you know stepping motor stepping motor are the stepping motors are the lower torque motors lower torque carrying capacity whereas in case of open loop uh, the advantages are the less complex less costly and lower maintenance costs okay these are the open loop uh, advantages whereas the closed loop advantages are that the dc motors have the ability to reverse instantly to adjust for positioning error so whether it will be plus or minus this can be instantaneously done by the dc motors all right the error compensation allows for greater positional accuracy and positional accuracy can be of uh, this value 0.0001 inch of now the dc motors have higher torque ranges against the stepper motors all right and the only limitation is that it is complicated so therefore it is highly it is more expensive because we have to have a, a transducer and we have to have a uh, you know loop this is the feedback signal with an amplifier preamplifier and so on now, now as i as i said that let us discuss a little bit about the adaptive control system what are the adaptive control systems adaptive control systems they are the closed loop feedback control systems which are fitted in the uh, many of the nc and the cnc machines particularly the modern nc and the cnc machines so that the output can be always monitored and output can be always uh, compensated for okay now let me give you an example that why these adaptive control systems are required let's say um, we have uh, the turning this is simple process okay and we have calculated the force required for the turning depending on the you know, parameters depending on the tool and the workpiece material combination okay and we have selected a tool for a certain hardness of the workpiece material all right now the hardness by hardness we uh, assume that the hardness is homogeneous all right but while cutting that cylindrical piece in the turning lathe in between in set at certain depth we have encountered a carbide particle which is very hard particle all right now the tool when it is encountering the carbide particle which is embedded there the force goes very high because it is actually the very hard particle for that high force the uh, process was not calculated and the uh, tool can actually break all right whereas if the feedback control or the adaptive control is used in that case that will be automatically sensed and immediately the tool will be retracted back so that this can be avoided this uh, breakage of the tool can be avoided or in some cases 
uh, you know it, there are some adaptive control systems where if it is if the uh, it exceeds if the force exceeds in that case the entire process will st be stopped okay so you will be knowing that something happened that the force has ex exceeded all right and it can be eliminated and so on in some uh, adaptive control systems it adapts itself so that the um, process continues and uh, the system uh, does not uh, break down all right and so on so the, let us discuss this although nc has a significant effect on downtime it can do relatively little to reduce the in process time let me give you little more details because we have not talked about the downtime or the in process time nc that is numerically controlled it can actually um, reduce the uh, downtime it can reduce the downtime means when the uh, pro, when the machine is not working machine is, is has failed it has stopped it's not working all right but it cannot uh, do much about the um, in process time see the machining time is something which we have said that we have the um, we have the l that is the length and that divided by n into f feed okay that is the that is the time taken for machining a particular length okay now the nc machine uh, cannot change that f that feed all right that's why l is constant that is the uh, the length of the workpiece divided by n is constant this is the rpm but f it can be varied but f is not varied in the conventional uh, system where there is no nc system all right f is constant and therefore the time taken is constant in the nc machine as well okay so therefore the nc system using these constant parameters it has no uh, leverage no possibilities to change the machining time and changing the machining time means that it will actually accelerate the production rate okay but in case of adaptive control system uh, these systems can actually have the effect of on the uh, in process time that means how much w they actually calculate the parameters okay each path in the uh, in the path each point at each point the cutting parameters are calculated by the adaptive control system and you know the uh, actual machining parameters okay the optimum machining parameters they are calculated for each of the points and since the machining happens at the actual uh, at the auto optimum cutting parameters therefore the time taken is optimum okay and uh, it is not like in case of the nc machines whereas nc guides the sequence of tool positions or the path of the tool during the machining as i said just now adaptive control determines the proper speed and or feed during the machining as a function of variations in such factors as work material hardness width or depth of cut just see what is written what is what is given let me explain it to you adaptive control system it determines that what should be the optimum speed or what should be the optimum feed during the machining and that will be uh, by varying such factors as work met okay by, by variation in such factors as workpiece material hardness width depth of cut etc in in terms of those okay how it is done we will see this now adaptive control has the capability to respond to and compensate for these variations okay these variations in these factors now adaptive control system uh, they can be used under the following conditions the in process time consumes a significant portion because normally the adaptive control we said that this have the effect on the in process time so when the in process time consumes a lot of time okay then of course it uh, makes sense to have some control over that so that it can be reduced all right then it will be feasible because otherwise the uh, of course the process is expensive okay using the adaptive control system will be always expensive more expensive than uh, let's say not using that okay now there are significant sources of variability in the job for which adaptive control can compensate okay that means the adaptive control adapts speed and or feed both to those variable conditions and variable conditions we said that uh, work material hardness 
Okay, one example that I was giving, this is an example of the variation in the work material hardness, that there are inclusion of the hard particles. So, the workpiece material hardness is, is varying okay. or width or depth of cut because these are the uh, errors in the um, process. All right. Now, adaptive control system is a control system that measures certain output process variables and uses these to control speed and or feed. Okay. That means, it will constantly measure uh, the output. Output may be anything, it may be as I as I gave you an example, it may be force, cutting force or it may be the relative movement between the tool and the workpiece, it may be the vibration. All right. uh, it may be many, many other parameters, it may be temperature, what is the uh, temperature which is uh, occurring, if the temperature is higher you may actually activate the process to do something, let us say coolant starting, otherwise you are not uh, you know putting the coolant on. As soon as the temperature goes beyond certain values which will be measured by the um, temperature uh, sensor, then your feedback control will be working. So, that is also an adaptive, adaptive control system. So, what I overall mean is that at the output there can be different kind of sensors to uh, measure different outputs. Okay. Either it is a uh, movement of the carriage or movement of the tool post, okay. vibration of the tool with respect to the workpiece and so on. Now, once again adaptive control system is a control system that measures certain output process variables and uses these to control the speed and the feed. That means, those variables which have to be let us say in, in terms of speed, as I said the speed is varying. So, uh, no sorry the force you are measuring the force as an output and you have to uh, you know uh, stabilize it. So, that can be stabilized by varying the feed or the speed. Okay. These are the two parameters that the adaptive control actually takes as the, as the controlling uh, parameters. Okay. By controlling these parameters variables can be variables can be stabilized. Now, the process variables can be therefore, uh, different. So, spindle deflection Okay, force, torque, cutting, temperature as I was telling, vibration, okay, am, vibration amplitude and power. So, any of these or many others may be, even other examples you can come up with, this can be the process variable. So, if it is, imp, if one of them or all of them are important for us to stabilize, then we will be using a suitable sensor which will sense the one of them or all of them okay, separately. So, all these are separate uh, sensors and then uh, take those uh, signals to the input, create the error signal and correct the system. Okay. That is the adaptive control system. So, there are two types of adaptive uh, control systems. Okay. One is the adaptive control optimization and another is the adaptive control constraint. Okay. So, adaptive control optimization as you can see in the slide, this is an index of performance is specified for the system which should be a measure of overall process performance such as production rate, cost per volume of material removal etcetera. Okay. So, uh, here an in overall index of index of performance. Right. Now, we have a production right, that overall index of performance is the production rate. So, through the production rate we can actually evaluate that particular production okay, like that. So, you select or you as the uh, decision maker you select the performance index of a particular process or a system and then that particular performance index objective is that to optimize the index of performance by manipulating speed and or feed in the operation. So, once again that is the index of performance, it is the index of performance that has to be selected, it can be many, it can be different that is production rate, cost per volume of material removal etcetera and that has to be optimized okay, by uh, manipulating the speed and or feed in the operation. So, this is the adaptive control optimization. Okay. 
Now second uh, type of adaptive control is the adaptive control constant. Okay. Now adaptive control constant has a constant limit and constant limits are uh, imposed on the measured process variables. The objective of the adaptive controller is to manipulate the speed and feed to maintain the measured variables at a at or lower or below their constant limit. So, uh, this is different than the uh, optimization in the sense that in case of adaptive control um, optimization, okay, we have the index of performance and that we are minimizing okay, or we are optimizing. All right. Now, in case of constant, we say that example that I have given that we have a uh, certain value of the force which cannot be exceeded. Okay. Now, if the tool meets with a portion of the material which is of uh, higher hardness, the force will exceed. And if the force exceeds that value, which is the uh, you know adaptive control constraint, in this case we are uh, we are defining. In that case, it will be actually um, changing or uh, it, the uh, process itself will manipulate the speed and or feed okay, to maintain the measured variable at or below the constant limit values. Okay. Meaning that uh, whenever that signal will go to the um, input and it will be compared with the input signal. So, there will be an error signal produced and the error signal will automatically change the speed or the feed. So, that the force is actually uh, decreased to the that value which is required. So, uh, how it is done that means the tool will be simply retracted or feed is given less okay, the speed can be decreased. So, that the force actually comes down below or to that limit which is given as a constant. So, once again uh, these are the two different types of the, the feedback control system adaptive feedback control system. One where we have the uh, you have the optimization okay, adaptive control optimization there we have the index certain index and that index has to be optimized in case it is the index is the production rate for example then the production rate has to be maximized so take the first derivative of that equation and take it equal to 0 it will be the uh, uh, maxima you can get okay but in case of adaptive control constant you set the value of certain uh, parameter that you are uh, interested in let's say force let us say it can be temperature, okay. it can be amplitude of vibration, okay. it can be deflection of the spindle and so on. And then whenever this change happens, then the feed and the speed can be changed by the system itself, adaptive control system itself, so that the that parameter which you wanted to stabilize will be activated. Okay. Now, most SEO system, SEO is the adaptive control optimization. Uh, they try to maximize the ratio of work material removal rate to tool wear rate. Okay. So, uh, we said that there are uh, you know the in SEO we have to have an index of performance. That index of performance is very popularly used as the ratio of the material removal rate and the TWR the tool wear rate. So, this has to be maximized so that tool wear rate can be less and material removal rate can be more. Okay. This is what is the these are the two types of the adaptive control systems and I will give you in my next uh, discussion uh, session some examples um, that will actually describe how effectively we can use the adaptive control systems and how we can use them actually in practice to what benefit. Thank you very much for your attention.